And there was a group of politicians who always supported us from very first day of our protesting against this war. So it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome our next two speakers. First speaker is le leader of Liberal Democrats group in Sheffield City Council, Shafak Muhammad. Please welcome, he is our big friend. Thank you, Tanya. Today marks one year since the brutal and barbaric attack by Putin on a sovereign state, Ukraine. But also today marks one year of defiance, of courage, of heroic fight by, by the people of Ukraine to say we will resist. No one fought that Ukraine could resist the Russian, mighty Russian army. But the people of Ukraine show the world that they can take on a dictatorship and they will succeed. And I use this platform today to call on the British government to do more to support. I welcome the 12 Challenger 2 tanks that the UK government has pledged. But actually in Salisbury, the city where Russian secret agents came to carry out a chemical attack on citizens of this nation, nearby is Salisbury Plains where there's dozens and dozens of UK tanks that are just there waiting. And I hope that the UK government will provide more tanks, just as Poland is providing the Leopard 2 tanks. Because we have to stand. Because today, you the people of Ukraine are fighting the war to protect us. Because Putin will not stop. Because of our European history, we know if we do not challenge dictators, that they will carry on. And we have to unite. And I welcome the world yesterday coming together. Because up to now, Putin has said, this is a war between Russia and the West. And actually 141 nations from Africa, Asia, South America, stood with Ukraine. Only seven nations stood with Russia, including Belarus and North Korea. So we will continue to work alongside you. Just as Tanya said, we, we were out there last year in solidarity with you, supporting you, welcoming you to this city of Sanctuary. We'll continue to do that. We will stand by you because ultimately you will succeed and you will help protect Europe. Slava Ukraine! I would like to welcome on this stage a councillor for Ecclesial Board, Barbara Masters, who is herself of Polish heritage. From her family history, she knows all too well what Russia can do. Barbara, please welcome. Thank you, Tanya, for inviting me to speak. It's both humbling and an honour to be asked. I remember the horror at hearing the news. The threat from Putin was always there, but to realise he'd actually decided to enact them was overwhelming. Anyone with some understanding of Russian history will know if the despots in power can't have what they want, they will destroy it. They start with the leadership, expecting the rest of the population to fall into line. If that doesn't work, Indiscriminate slaughter of people follows and the destruction of their means of survival. If territory is gained, evidence of the nation's culture is stripped, the language suppressed as if the nation never existed. It's a horribly familiar path. We hoped that Europe had learned the lessons in the two world wars fought last century and the horrors would never again be allowed to happen. We watched helplessly as conflicts rage elsewhere, in Syria and Yemen, and allowed ourselves to believe it can't happen here. Ukraine shows that it can. The war isn't the result of actions from a rogue state, but stems from Putin's belief that there would be little or no resistance from a small nation to its numerically superior forces, and that other nations would stand by and let it happen, 
as they've done before. Putin was wrong on all fronts, and we salute the bravery and resolve of the Ukrainian people. They are fighting for their right to exist. Our government has chosen to support Ukraine in their fight for the right for self-determination and to live in peace. And I'm so grateful for this. It's a small cost to us compared with what it will be if Putin is allowed to win. We take our freedoms for granted, but they're fragile. People from Eastern Europe and those of an Eastern European heritage understand only too well and wonder which nation will next be targeted. We stand in vigil with you to show our support, however inadequate it seems to be, in the face of the suffering of your nation. We stand with Ukraine. We especially think of the children who have perished and wonder what sort of monster targets children. The most vulnerable and precious gift to their parents, the future of the country. We take for granted a roof over our head and that we can tuck our children into a bed at night. I pray that Ukrainians will soon be able to do the same. <laughs>